She's like a sickness in my brain. The vision standing by the window pane. She ripples through the blinds and leaves me in a daze. It's in the way her body moves me. The way she grabs me and intoxicates. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. This is a coffee and crime time, and this is a coffee and crime time about a case that has recently just had some developments in it. This also happened in 1983, so it's one of those cold cases that has existed as a mystery for quite a while. On June 22nd of 1983, 15-year-old Emmanuel Orlandi went missing. Teenagers around the world, they go missing all the time. But why is this case different? and why has there been so much mystery and intrigue that surrounds it? Well, the 15-year-old in question, she was a citizen of Vatican City. Vatican City is where the Pope lives. It's the, the base of the Catholic Church, but it's also a sovereign state. So essentially, even though it exists in Italy, it is governed by its own rules and its own laws. It's essentially an, an entirely different country inside of a country. They are not held to the same laws or rules as anybody outside of Vatican City. It's a very strange phenomenon, if you ask me. And there's a lot of reasons and a lot of history as to why Vatican City is under its own government and its own rules. It has its own laws, but that is a tale for another day because today we have to tell the story of Emanuela. Emanuela's father worked for the Vatican. He was a clerk and her grandfather held the same position. She had just finished her second year of high school and she was headed to her music lesson that day. On the day in question, she was wearing gym shoes, jeans and a white shirt and she got to her music lesson a little bit late and she seemed to be distracted and she requested to leave early now apparently there were some reports that earlier in the day while she was at school she'd been telling some classmates and friends that she was planning to run away from home to sell avon cosmetics and in fact that day after she left her music lesson emanuela called her sister and said that a man had offered her a lot of money to sell avon cosmetics and her sister was like well, you should talk about it with our parents and decide from there that evening she was spotted talking to a woman with red hair and the last time she was ever seen she was getting into a green bmw and in that green bmw eyewitnesses saw prominently an avon bag Emanuela was supposed to meet with another sister later that day, but she never showed up and she hasn't been seen since. Now Vatican City and the Pope and the Catholic Church in general, there's always been a lot of scandal and mystery surrounding it. The Vatican in general is known for its secrecy and is known for being wrapped up in things that they probably shouldn't be. If anybody's read Dan Brown's novels, like The Da Vinci Code, of course, there's so much conspiracy and theories that surround Vatican City, the Vatican, and the Pope. And I believe that some of them are true and factual. Pretty much anything I hear that has to do with the Vatican being secretive or hiding things or sweeping things under the rug, I just by default believe because they have been proven to hide things and protect their priests that have been involved in situations that they shouldn't be. Three days after her disappearance, her family was contacted by a man that called himself Pier Luigi. He claimed that his girlfriend knew a girl who matched Emanuela's description and that she was going by the name of Barbara. She wore glasses, which Emanuela did wear glasses, but she hated wearing glasses, and she played the flute, which was also another characteristic of Emanuela. But she was going by the name Barbara, and she was selling cosmetics. Another man who called himself Mario, which is strange because the first guy called himself Pier Luigi and this guy's calling himself Mario, Mario, Luigi, kind of weird, not real names, I don't think, but he also claimed that he knew a girl who matched Emmanuel's description, who was selling cosmetics and going by the name Barbara. Then Pope John Paul II did something that many people have criticized him for doing. He got up and made a public statement saying, I know the family, I know this girl, please bring her home. If anybody has her, you know, please bring her back. So he, at that point, affiliated himself personally with Emanuela. If somebody had kidnapped her, they now realized that this girl they had in their custody was an important person to the Pope, an important person to the Vatican, and they realized they had a leverage if they wanted something out of the Vatican. And who doesn't want something out of the Vatican? Holder of many secrets. Two days after the Pope made this very public appeal that he would repeat seven times, 
a mysterious man began phoning both the Vatican and the Orlandi house. He used the code number 158 to identify himself and he was nicknamed by those he talked to as La Americano because he had what they called an American accent. What this mysterious man wanted from the Pope, from the Vatican, from the Orlandi family was the release of a man who had two years prior attempted to assassinate the Pope. This man, who actually did end up shooting and wounding the Pope, was named Mehmet Ali Atka. Atka. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that was his name. I'll put a picture of him up if I can find it. And he was a Turk. So that caused people to put two and two together that possibly she'd been kidnapped by the ultra-nationalist Turkish Grey Wolves. Obviously, their motive was to swap their prisoner now for the prisoner that the Vatican had. Did he have proof that he actually had a Manuela in his custody? He didn't send a picture of her. He didn't give much proof, but he did have in his possession a photocopy of her registration card for the music school. He also did have in his possession photocopies of sheet music for the flute, a piece which Emanuela had been studying. But then all these other organizations came forward taking responsibility for Emanuela's kidnapping. The Turkish Anti-Christian Liberation Front, they wrote letters also requesting the release of the prisoner. And this organization made mention of another girl, and her name was Morella Grigori. She also went missing in the summer of 1983, but in completely different circumstances. What happened with her was she was in her apartment and the intercom went off, like somebody buzzed up. And she answered the intercom and then told her mother it was a friend of hers and she was going down to talk to her friend and then she was never seen again. Now, an Italian Secret Service operative who was close to the Orlandi family, and his name was Giulio Ganji, he actually had tracked down the BMW, or a BMW that matched the description of the one she'd last been seen getting into. He found a mechanic on Piazza Vescovia who had repaired a BMW window that had been broken from the inside as if somebody had been in the car and trying to get out. The mechanic then gave him the name and address of the woman who had brought the car in to be repaired. When Julia went to this woman's address, she pretty much said, stop bothering me and don't come back here. When he returned to the SISD office, he was told to back off, to not go to that woman's house again and not bother her. Now just today, July 3rd, this is gonna post on July 4th, happy Independence Day, but July 3rd, there has been a development in the case. The Vatican has agreed to open a pair of tombs in the heart of Vatican City to search for the remains of a teenage girl who went missing more than three decades ago. Apparently last summer, a lawyer received an envelope with a letter inside. There was also a picture of the statue of an angel in the Tutianic Cemetery inside the Vatican, and the letter said, if you want to find Emanuela, search where the angel looks. So these tombs are due to be open on July 11th. The remains, all the remains of anybody who's buried there are going to undergo DNA testing to see if there's a match for Emanuela in any of the remains. I guess in the past, the Vatican hasn't been super cooperative about finding Emanuela or opening their doors to people who want to find Emanuela, which doesn't surprise me. Like I said, they are incredibly secretive, maybe for good reason, maybe not. There have been obviously a lot of theories floating around about what happened to this girl. And when somebody disappears in thin air, without a trace, amidst so much mystery, you're always gonna hear it. There's always gonna be theories and some of them are gonna be crazy and some of them are going to seem crazy, but in this case, they might actually be true. A lot of people obviously think the Vatican is directly involved one way or the other. Vatican City, there's not a lot of people who live there full time. I think like a thousand reported about two years ago. They said there's a thousand full time residents of Vatican City and Emanuela was one of them. So there's not a lot of people that live there. Most of the people that do live there work for or are affiliated with the Vatican in some way. Because of past scandals with the Catholic Church, the predators in priests' clothing, essentially, that have been preying on children for years. And the Vatican has often been accused, and actually in a lot of ways proven, that they have known about what was going on, seen these accusations, heard them, found them to be true, but yet they covered it up. They protected these priests who were abusing and molesting young children. And instead of firing them or bringing them up on charges or punishing them in some way, they just moved them around. They transferred them to different dioceses. So there is always whispers of cover-ups going on in Vatican City with the Pope and with the Catholic Church. 
And I think that a lot of us can admit that we know that this happens. But the disappearance of a 15 year old girl, her possible murder, is that something that the Vatican would take part in? Once again, anything that has to do with the Vatican, I don't write off because it's always possible. Now, the rumors and the theories that float around is that possibly Emanuela was being used in a sex ring that had to do with officials in the Vatican. And they either killed her to cover it up or they gave her a new identity and brought her somewhere else so that it wouldn't be exposed. What is fairly certain is that the Vatican knows more than they're saying. There was a phone call that was being recorded between a priest who worked at the central office for Vatican vigilance. His name was Raul Bonarelli. He was overheard on a phone call with his boss being told essentially to deny knowledge of Vatican investigations into the case. Pietro Orlandi told Spectator Life, the behavior of the Vatican makes me think that someone has responsibility directly or indirectly. The Vatican has always tried to forget this story. He believes that there was a ransom requested for Emanuela, requested to the Vatican, and they never released that information because possibly they never paid it or they decided not to pay it or the price they would have to pay was higher than they were willing to. There's also a theory going around that this Roman gang was involved or responsible for what happened to her. The gang was called Banda della Magliana and it was a criminal gang in Rome and they were extremely well connected. They operated from the late 1970s through the early 1990s, which would have put them flourishing and operating during the time that she went missing in that city. It says they appeared on occasion to have links to the mafia, to Masonic lodges, to politicians, and the intelligence services. It also says the gang had invested its vast fortunes in the mafia-linked Banco Ambrosanio, one of whose main shareholders was the Vatican's IOR. When the bank crashed, the gang lost millions, and they may have realized that the Vatican could be an easy target to get their money back. There was some information that the Vatican had indeed been warned before the disappearance of Emanuela that it would be targeted by its enemies. One of Emanuela's closest friends also came forward and said that she believed she was being followed and watched in the days prior to Emanuela's disappearance. Her family was so worried about her being followed that they actually disconnected their phone. And according to her, a few days before Emanuela went missing, somebody grabbed her and put her in a car and said, is this the one? At the time she wrote it off as, you know, just men in Italy grabbing girls and having fun and having a laugh, but given the circumstances and what happened to her friend, it may have been more. There's so much to the story, so many calls and notes and letters written to the Vatican, written to the family of Emanuela, stating they've seen her or they know her or they know where she is. It's hard to decipher what's true and what's just a ruse. But one thing I do want to say is, I don't think that they're gonna find anything on July 11th, and here's why. Apparently when all of this came out, the Vatican was really willing to open up the crypt and be like, yeah, look inside. And in my opinion, if they had something to hide and they knew they had something to hide, they would not have been so cooperative because they don't need to cooperate. Remember, they make their own rules. They don't need to cooperate. They can say no, and nobody can make them do anything. So if Emanuela was ever there, allegedly, if she was ever there, and allegedly, if the Vatican was involved, in my opinion, she would have been moved from there before they ever let anybody in. If the Vatican, in my opinion, allegedly, supposedly, my conspiracy, if they had anything to do with what happened to Emanuela, or they know who did, or they were directly responsible, we will never find out. Because unfortunately, the Catholic Church, not only are they incredibly powerful, but they are incredibly secretive and they have the means and the opportunity to be as powerful as they want and to be as secretive as they want. Can you imagine all the things that the Catholic Church over its many centuries of existence has had their hands into? The many things that allegedly they have covered up or been a part of that nobody has ever found out about, ever. When have you ever heard a lot of noise about the Catholic Church that stayed and remained and you saw people being held accountable or you know brought to task for it? Not really ever. They find a way to make things go away. They find a way to hide things so well and for so long 
that nobody will ever find out, probably until the end of time. So unfortunately, even though I wish that Emmanuel's family could have some answers and could have some closure, if the Catholic Church was involved, if Vatican City was involved, if the Pope was involved, allegedly, guys, I'm not accusing the Catholic Church of anything. This is all just speculation, because I'm not trying to go missing. But if they were involved, unfortunately, I don't think we will ever know the truth because they have a way of keeping the truth hidden. And you know that saying that's like, everything that's in the dark will eventually come to the light. That's 100% true. That's 100% true everywhere in the world, except for Vatican City. So let's keep an eye on this case. Let's hope and pray that one day we will find out what happened to Emanuela. All of these theories, they're, they're probable. The gray wolf theory, the gang theory, um, holding her hostage, trying to get something out of the Vatican or the Pope, they're all very probable. I don't think it was an outside job. I don't think it was just a random kidnapping. I don't think somebody just drove into Vatican City looking for a girl to kidnap because like I said, there's not a lot of people who live there. If a random kidnapper or a random predator was trying to take somebody and not have it become a noticeable event and not have it become something that gained a lot of media. They wouldn't go to Vatican City and do it. They would grab a girl from any other populous city in Italy that there's tons of tourists or tons of young people walking around all the time. They wouldn't have gone to Vatican City. So I definitely don't think it's just not connected to anything Vatican City-ish. I definitely think that they know what happened. Allegedly, it's just my opinion. I'm not accusing anybody. Don't come for me, Pope, please. Personally, my daughter, who is 17 years old and may one day want to travel Europe, if she said she wanted to go to the Vatican City, I would tell her to be incredibly careful, to never go and walk the streets alone, and to never really go out after dark because it's just a very spooky place. And if you guys want me to do a whole video on Vatican City, and the kinds of mysteries and things that have happened in there and the history of it and why it is the way it is, let me know in the comments because that would be super fun to do. I think it's a kind of true crime mystery, but also history kind of video. Those are the kinds that I really love and thrive on and enjoy telling you guys. So let me know if you're interested in that, but either way, let's hope and pray for Emmanuel's parents and her family. She has four siblings that they finally one day get answers and get closure but I don't think July 11th will be that day. And obviously July 11th is when they, they will grab all the remains out, but it's gonna take months and months and months for DNA testing of those remains. So it's gonna be a long time before we even get any answers from that. But mark my words, I don't think we're gonna get answers from that. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. I am currently working on my next big case, but it's gonna be about a week and a half before it comes out because I have a lot of research to do. I have interviews to do. I'm working closely with somebody that's close to the case and I wanna get it completely right because it's another case that outrages me and makes me feel absolutely livid about what's going on in the world sometimes and how it's so unfair that some people will never get justice. So I wanna make sure that everybody who needs justice and deserves justice, at least gets a shot at that. And I know you guys feel the same way. Thank you so much. Stay kind and stay beautiful, and I'll see you soon. Bye.